Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we will dive deep into the one of the most powerful features in custom query language, the let statement. If you are looking to write more efficient, readable and maintainable queries, then this video is definitely for you. So let's get started without any further ado. My name is Navneet Kumar and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. The learning objectives of this video are the introduction to the let statement, what exactly it is, why shall we care about it, basic syntax for using the let statement, storing some complex queries in form of variables or uh, views or data tables within the let statement or through the let statement combining multiple let statements for more complex queries and finally performance benefits of using the let and the best practices and any pitfalls we will be covering in this video. So first thing first, what exactly is the let statement is in the simple terms, it allows you to create the variables that can store the intermediate results or any expressions like some tabular expressions or with along with some operators you want to use. This is a great way to simplify the complex queries and avoid the repeating of same logic multiple times in your KQL queries. This not only improves the performance because the machine need not to query the same data again and again or uh, calculate that data again and again but it also lets you write your queries in more precise and uh, effective way so let's take a closer look at the image to understand this if you look at this let statement that has been defined here that is uh, to declare a variable that is az critical logs I have created and in that then we have equal sign and then right after that we have the tabular expression to call the table as your activity where is another operator used where the level equals to critical so these critical logs will be stored within this variable just like any uh, typical scripting language allows you to declare a variable and then you have equal sign and then right on the right side you have some expressions that you execute it works in the same way the thing that you need to take care is that the let is mentioned in the small letters like you see the operator where is also used with small letters because keeping all small is a good practice in scripting that is why this best practice has been applied here so this is case sensitive you need to ensure that you are using this all sm small for the um, operators or the commands that you use in KQL then finally this uh, variable or the table uh, that has been created uh, by calling this as your activity so the name is az critical logs has been called on the second line so when this uh, uh, variable was called or accessed then the results in that variable are displayed as results at the bottom in this image so this is how we can declare the variables and we can store any types of data be it some views some virtual tables you are creating or the data tables you are creating with the help of this let or you're storing some queries or expressions that you can do with the help of this let statement moving further Let's discuss the basic syntax of the let statement. The previous example that I provided you uh, was just a basic syntax. This is the syntax that you see on your screen on the image that is uh, declaring the let to declare the variable. You can provide any descriptive and a friendly name that is uh, quite meaningful about the data that is stored inside it and then you can run your expression on the right side of this equal sign then you can call this variable again and again in your script so this let your data be accessed in a faster manner and it also keeps your code short and it keeps your code look better 
Well, next is storing complex queries in variables. If in case you want to store some complex queries, now we can use that. And often we have to work with multiple data transformations uh, when we are working as a data analyst. So the let statement helps us keep these things tidy. How? Uh, we have declared this let, then recent AZ activities, this time I have done, uh, where I have collected the Azure activities, and then uh, this is the tabular expression Azure activity, where the time generated greater than ago 10 days. So I'm collecting the te last 10 days of uh, Azure activity logs. Then these are stored in this variable recent AZ activities, and after that I have done, done some sort of aggregation of this data based on the level by level as you see and then visualize this data using this render command with pie chart so the result that you see as a pie chart at the bottom this shows that in last 10 days uh, the azure activities and types of activities that we have so information we have 80.77 percent and then we have the other categories here well, next is combining multiple let statements for more complex queries. Sometimes we have to declare more than one let statement if we have the large queries. So we can use that. And uh, uh, this is especially when we are working with larger data sets. So we have to use multiple let statements. We have to write lengthy queries. So here you see at the line number one and two, there are two different let statements declared with two different variables, recent Azure activities and recent Azure AD or enter ID, it is known as today, audit logs. So I have stored these two different types of uh, data in these two variables, uh, as you see, where time generated has been used in last 10 days. And then I have taken the latest or the top three uh, records from each of the table. Then I did some complex operations, like I'm going to merge the data of both of the variables. So I did union, which literally can put the data side by side of both of the tables or multiple uh, tables. So three were there from each. So I can see the three Azure activities and three at the bottom, the Azure audit logs, Azure Active Directory audit logs at the bottom. So with, regardless the, uh, the uh, you can say, columns match or not, we can use the union to put this data together. I have already done a video on union and on join. So join is somewhere different than this uh, union. So you can watch my videos in this series. And uh, this is how we can uh, use this to combine the multiple let statements for the complex queries that you see very often within your uh, KQL queries that you are working with. Well, there is a question that whether there are performance benefits of using the let. Yes, of course, I already uh, told you in the beginning of this video that uh, because we have specified the let and we have stored the data after collecting or querying it from the data store and after performing the calculations once and then we can uh, repeat it or access it multiple times. So the system need not to do the calculation or retrieval of this data again and again, which helps into improving the performance of your query. Next is best practices and the pitfalls if I talk about. So uh, number one is be descriptive with your variable name so that your code is easier to understand for others as well. Like I provided the names you see uh, were you know quite descriptive in this case. Then avoid storing the large data sets unnecessarily in the variables large data sets so it's not good idea for that only store the intermediate results that you will use multiple times uh, the reason behind that is that it will make this uh, repeatable or reusable if you put a large data set um, um, into a variable which may not or which is not required to be called again and again in the uh, query then uh, it is no point of putting it. So the overall idea is to use these variables for reusability or for repeat uh, rate should be higher. So if the code is quite complex, the query is quite complex and is no longer required to be repeated in the query further, then it is no point of putting it into a uh, variable using the let statement. So that is another uh, best practice that we should follow. Uh, the third best practice is that do not nest the let statement 
too deeply so you need to keep your queries clear and maintainable so this improves the maintainability of your code do not write it quite complex so that it becomes difficult to maintain it in future when you need to do the updates to this query so just like you do the packaging of the softwares and you use the reusable packages or modules so you go with the modular design instead of uh, uh, going with the monolithic design jamming everything or putting everything in one single uh, variable so don't do it quite deep well this is how we can use the let statement in the kql queries i hope this was informative to you thanks for watching and do subscribe the channel if you have not subscribed it yet